Hello, hello. Happy Sunday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Sunday. <laughs> I have had a chill day. I have uh, not done any of the things that I needed to do. Hello, DJ King. I am seven minutes and 50 seconds late today because of DJ King because she posted a video. Hello, sus. Happy Sunday. Uh-oh. That's what I was afraid of is it was eventually going to. Let me see if I can get the live chat up. All right. Hello, Joss. This thing is not wanting to cooperate with me today. Is that a sign? Delise, hello, hello. Y'all, mm, mm, mm. it's going to be one of those days. I probably, what can I put to keep it from like going crazy on me? Yes, we are going to do a sip and cuss today. And I'm going to get started early because y'all, I still have to pack and I honestly have dinner in the oven. I would go back and speak to everyone, but every time I touch the camera on my phone, hello, the closet dive. Hi, is that Melly's Corner? Welcome. Every, Sabrina, Lucinda, hello, hello. Sonja, hello, happy Sunday. I'm sorry for those that I missed every time I touch the camera because I've put a um, a sprocket thing on the back of my phone. It tilts. Hello, Shadow Smith. Tell Duck Daddy I said hello, hello. Diva9000X, hello. I will get Carmen your information as soon as the live is over. Um, I did not have a chance to do that before I signed in. Um, so, perfect, perfect. So, um... <clears throat> Let's just jump right in. So by a show of hands or the I's or the K's or the me, however you want to signify it, if lately you have been buying more from other brands than you have been from Dooney, just say me. It doesn't have it can be bags, it can be accessories. But if the boxes arriving on your porch, the stores that you are making your purchases in, are something other than Dooney and Berg, just say me. Hi, Ange. Hi, Delise. Yep, I'm starting to see the hands go up, the me's coming in. So here's my first topic for sip and cuss tonight. We are virtually through half of 2019. Like we are past the 15th of May and we are rapidly approaching the end of the month and June will be here before we know it. I purchased during the 12 days of Dooney, but y'all know that that was a challenge. And the only thing that I purchased was the medium Florentine Russell in multiple colors. Other than that, I did not make any purchases during the 12 days of Dooney. And it was um, not because I was exploring other brands at the time. It literally was because there wasn't anything during the 12 days of Dooney that um, I either didn't have um, or the price wasn't good. Or quite honestly, they were bags that I wasn't interested in them when they first released. And I wasn't interested in them at a discounted price in December. Which is odd for me because I'm a December baby. I love the Christmas holiday season. You all know my favorite color is red. So anything that sparks that kind of energy and fire um, provokes me to pull out my debit or credit card um, or cash, depending on where I am, and make a purchase. But that just was not the case this past December for my Dooney and Burke purchases. I fast forward and usually Dooney has a decent 
like after Christmas sale. Um, but I didn't buy anything at that time either. And then um, fast forward and we're in February with the Sweethearts collection, which I thought was absolutely adorable. But I wasn't interested in the limited number of pieces, right? The styles that they brought. So I didn't need an all hearts cosmetic case, nor did I need an entire bag with hearts. Um, it would have been nice to maybe get some accessories in it, but specifically was looking for a Carrington in that because I thought it would have been perfect to mix and match. And you've heard this on this channel from me probably since February that I really think it was a miss that that particular um, print was not made available in the Carrington. It didn't matter to me whether it was, you know, uh, printed leather, whether it was coated cotton, it could have been in nylon. I just think that it was a miss for me that that was not available in the Sweetheart collection. Fast forward and the spring collection comes and we have the blooms or bloom. Gorgeous color palette, but I don't know that I need a full bag with flowers all over it. I picked up a floral bag during the um, bucket list experience. I have um, a few bags from the Montego and Siesta, which of course are not flower, but they're printed. I have a couple of other page sack um, bags and I just didn't feel like I needed Bloom in a full bag. Even though they had it in the Leisure Shopper, I only recall seeing the bloom in the small Leisure Shopper. Um, but I also didn't see a Carrington. I didn't see um, matching large wallets like the Willis available in that. So prints available, yes, but um, not in those pieces that I think we are really, really on the market and looking for right now. So what's the sip and cuss? The sip and cuss is we are almost in June, which means that if sale patterns trend this year, like they have in prior years, we are coming up on the summer fun sale. And I haven't seen anything fun that would make me want to spend my money in the sun for fun or anything else because it has just been kind of blah. No new accessories, no big collections, um, limited pieces, limited colors. I mean, the corals, the salmons, they were pre-order. I don't know that I've seen any videos where folks that pre-ordered that Florentine um, salmon bag have gotten it in. Um, Mrs. Q was at the outlet and sent a couple of pictures um, and the colors just didn't grab you or grab me or grab the ladies the way summer, fun, bold, bright colors should this time of year. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this is a sign that they are going to pull out all the stops for the fall and for the winter and the 12 days of Dooney this year. But I'm just not seeing anything right now that would make me um, pull out my card or... If I didn't pull out my card because I was waiting to see what was coming next, um, that I would, you know, kind of have FOMO if I didn't get it. There just isn't anything there that is pulling at me to, you know, I'm not stalking the sites. The sales haven't been great. 
Um, the variety hasn't been great. The color offering for this time of year just hasn't been great. Um, if you're shopping the resale um, or the secondary market or resale market, um, if you're buying maybe older bags, um, if there were, you know, bags that were on the site last year and you decided you were going to kind of gradually buy them, then, I, you know, I, I, I can see where there may not be a lot of difference. But um, that hasn't been the case for me right now. The other thing that continues to stay in the back of my mind is the price increase that Dooney had um, a couple of months back. So now when I'm looking at the price of something, I am looking at it in the context of if I get a discount off, is it really a sale um, or does it get me back to what the previous price was or is it a little bit less? And if that's the case, I've, I've, not, I've not had enough time um, or made enough purchases to really be at peace <laughs> with the price increase because the price went up, but I'm not getting anything else. I'm not getting any different organization. I'm not getting tons of new accessories or collections. I'm not getting um, the fun pops of color. I'm not, those things are just not available. So I'm struggling with the fact that there isn't a lot of new stuff. Yeah, I get, I get it, I, the, uh, the closet dive. Um, but at the same time, either bring back some of the staple items or go all in make go all in and help me to understand the price increase and i'm not saying bags have to be bigger or smaller or because i still want the same quality i still want um the same level of attention to detail but what i think was a huge miss for dooney is that they should have done a gradual price increase so for example um, with the new coral and salmon for this season, when you bring those colors, if you're because they they pride themselves on these different tiers of prices, which is a whole nother sip and cuss. But if you're going to bring in new pops of color, for example, in the medium Florentine satchel, bring those in at the 430 at your new price point right and then as colors die out or you kind of have a baseline or gradually do an increase but people i think would have gladly in this community would have paid a little bit more to have the kelly green come back no they probably would not have liked it from a from a pay standpoint but the fact that that bag like a Kelly Green is now available. It's Florentine. They didn't want it in the resale market. It's available on Dooney Pay. Go ahead and take the plunge and that way I can get it and it's at a premium cost. I just think that they there was there was a miss in the strategy around the rollout of this price increase. And I was not expecting there to be like an announcement, hey, make all of your purchases now because on X day, we're gonna have a price increase. Um, but I just, I just think that that was kind of a miss for them. Or you start gradually with new collections and bringing those out at a much higher price point so that people get accustomed to paying that and then it, it don't necessarily, um, if, it doesn't cause those frustrations, I think, that um, paying for the, sa the same natural Florentine medium satchel bag that somebody is buying today for $438, I got at a much lower price point. Maybe that's the reward for getting on the bandwagon sooner rather than later. But I just, that, I, in the back of my mind, when I'm looking at sales, right? I'm looking at is that sale enough to really discount from what the price was a couple of months ago. And that's why I was in such a push 
um, for me to get my uh, steel blue is because I knew after the price increase, one, there weren't any other colors that were available at that time that I wanted to add into my collection that made me take the dive. I wanted that steel blue one because I didn't feel like I was going to be I was going to be able to wrap my mind around paying more for it. And I haven't bought I bought three leisure shoppers. Three or no, I bought two leisure shoppers and a third bag. Um, and you've seen the two leisure shoppers on here. Uh, I, I, there's another thing that off and on has driven me absolutely bananas about Dooney. They seem to do a little bit better on <clears throat> their most recent sale or the sale before. Um, and that is case in point last year during the summer fun sale, there was um, a sale on Dooney.com during the summer fun sale for the Claire, Pembroke Claire. It was on sale, bought plenty of them. Then on the heels of the summer fun sale, different colors as well as some of the same colors were made available on I Love Dooney for less. I understand that they swear that they are two different companies. So is Sam's from Walmart. And you won't find advertisements for Sam. You don't find a link from Walmart onto Sam's and vice versa. They literally treat those as two different companies. So for ILD to be linked to Dooney.com, if they are not affiliated, it is completely misleading. And again, I think that's a huge miss from the marketing department that they would think that we are so dumb that we wouldn't connect the two of those together. But I digress. So the bag, different colors, cheaper price point, available on ILD. I have a problem with that, right? I can understand... Um, let's just use Kate Spade as an example, or let's use Coach as an example, or let's use Michael Kors as an example. Um, let's use MCM as an example. Um, I can go and, as an example, you saw this yesterday during tribe time. This was on, I think this was on um, 70, 60% off. I think it was 60% off. And it then they were running an additional promotion with an additional 20% off. All right. So if the additional 20% off is today, if it's already on sale, and it's an additional 20% off today, then I should pay less. No pun to the shoe company. After the additional percentage off, if this was already on clearance as an example, right? Then I would expect to still be able to get it at the clearance price. I just wouldn't get the additional percentage off because it was already marked down and on clearance, right? Am I looking at that wrong? What I think Dooney does is they throw out the sale and then they double back and they piss people off because if they had just waited, it would have been cheaper without the discount. Which makes no sense because it makes consumers like me leery to pull the trigger because I'm always wondering if I buy it this week, is it going to be on ILD next week for $10 less than what the sale price was this week? I shouldn't have to be trigger shy because they are playing these games if you're not if ILD is not affiliated with Dooney then they should break that link 
Um, but as far as them being on the same site together, why do I, as the consumer, have to be inconvenienced with packing up my doggone package to ship it back, having double money tied up because the only way to take advantage of the sale is to go ahead and buy a second one today. Then I got to pay money, gas time to ship the other one back to get my money back. When you could just do a stink. Tell me how the girls you done been with. None of them got nothing. You could do a price adjustment and save me the hassle, the frustration of having to go through all of that. It makes absolutely no sense. And I can't think of another company, another retailer, the Macy's, previously Nordstrom, Dillard's, where if I place an online order for Dooney on on Friday night and it goes on sale on Saturday morning, I can call them with my order number and get an adjustment. I don't understand why the brand itself inconveniences its consumers to that extent. I just, I, I, I don't understand it. I don't get it. And that gets my blood boiling every single time I think about having double money tied up or I know some of you have had this situation as well where an order is canceled or doesn't ship or you've shipped it back and they've received it but you have to call in order for them to release your money for your refund. I don't understand why that seems to be hit and miss with certain transactions. If you have the merchandise back as soon as you have that, then you should be issuing the refund. We shouldn't have to call to follow up on that. Every other place does it extremely quickly. So I just think that there's an opportunity for them to reevaluate internal um, marketing, pricing, return um, processes because there still seems to be a miss. I know that we spent um, collectively a lot of time on the surveys that they did on last year asking if we were interested in other brands being available, if we were interested in accessories or sunglasses or all of those kinds of things. And has anyone seen like the feedback that we've given them play out? Because unless there's somebody in this live that secretly said do a price increase, did somebody do that? You should be afraid. You should be very afraid if you completed that survey last year and told them that it was time to do a price increase because that was not what we discussed as a community. But has anyone, based on the feedback that you gave Dooney on their survey and then ILD on theirs, have you seen any of that feedback implemented? I'm curious. I, I need to see if anyone can tell me what, I mean, why, other than the additional, like, I think it was 15 or 20% off of a regular price item, other than getting the additional discount, my question is, what in the hell did they do with all of those words that we sat and typed to answering those questions and filling in the free form comments um, to let them know what we wanted as consumers and how to get better? What happened with all of that? I'll wait. I'm curious. I'm interested. I, I did notice that with uh, Peter's passion project, Henry's, um, that they did expand the customer service hours for Henry's. And they also have Saturday customer service hours, which I think is absolutely amazing. But you have more followers, more consumers of your core brand than you have of your passion project. I mean, unless the goal was to get all of that feedback so that you could build the passion 
project for Henry's better? I, I don't I don't know. I'm confused by that. Um, but I've not seen any change in customer service policies. I've not seen a change in the way they do sales. Um, there's no reward program for frequent purchases or um, or like a, a customer loyalty program. Um, I'm not seeing any new locations pop up in um, outlet malls. Um, I'm I, all of the other things. I mean, there was a litany of things, um, but uh, I've not seen any of that feedback implemented on Dooney or ILD. Henry's expanded customer service hours, yes, but nothing, nothing beyond that. So I'm one of those people, I don't like people wasting my time. <laughs> you know, if you aren't prepared to do something with the feedback then I personally would rather you not ask because after you ask I'm under the impression that you're going to do something with it especially if you hear the same thing from several different people and that has not happened so I'm a bit disappointed there so I could go on and on and on and on but I do have a bag and um bought this bag i don't know sanja kim dj king mrs q carmen sabrina you ladies may be able to help me with the time frame um uh, because it's been sitting for a while and i'm going to thank Valerie for the color inspiration. So I went from an extreme of tons of red bags uh, to starting the year off very neutral in color palette. And uh, been there, right? Um, so far this year. But I have here the Kingston Hobo in the city leather in the color oyster. And my lighting seems to be a little um, off tonight, but this is she. I picked this up from QVC. It was a, um, let's see. Let's see if I can. I'm losing the chat. All right, let's see. Um, it was a one day only. It was oh, I can't remember now, but I think it was Kimberly Mines that was the enabler for this one. She spotted it in all of the different colors, and most of us bought several because. Um, it was city leather. It's a coveted style. It was new. Um, apricot was available. There was midnight. There was oyster. There was leaf. Tons of different colors. And we knew um, that once the um, presentation aired, that colors would become very limited and sell out. So here she is. And again, in the color oyster by the way for the last since the um, meet and greet in nashville i have been carrying my red main street satchel and it has been amazing to travel with i was gonna do a what fits in it but that makes no sense because the bag is not available unless Peter is secretly planning to bring it back. So I decided it doesn't make sense for me to do that. If the bag comes back, then I'll I'll post a video and share. But again, this is Kingston in the color oyster. 
You have seen this bag in this community 9,000 times over. It is an absolutely amazing bag. Tons and tons of storage before you even get in to the interior of the bag. Wonderful hobo. And did y'all see that? Look at this. Look. Really? I guess that's what I get for waiting to open the bag. But for real, like, what are we paying all of this money for if I have to be worried about stuff like that? Now you got me. Now I got to really inspect it because... Oh, that craziness. Y'all. This right here, Peter, we're going we gonna to stay separated for a little while over this one. Because what I haven't shared with y'all that I need to film and show is that on my um, oyster, was it oyster or taupe, leisure shopper. It has the same thing going on on the handle, on the strap. There is a thread that has come a loose. So I need to send it back. I don't know whether they've changed leather houses. I don't know whether they are, are changing the thread quality i don't i don't know what is going on i was initially really excited to make the transition out of my hb bag because it was peeling the leather was peeling into the leisure shopper because i knew that the duny quality was going to be so much better and then i have issues with the thread and now a completely different bag. Can't even say that it's because I've carried it or it's gotten pulled on something or snagged. And Y'all, that has my blood boiling. Because I think it just missed everything else is like a double stitch. Let me look at this side. No, they just screwed it up. I was thinking, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on this side, but near the top, there, I was looking to see if they had, like, tried to double stitch to the bag leather on this side. Can you uh, see? I was trying to see if it was a double stitch because on the other side where the thread is, it appears that they were trying to do a double stitch and maybe just didn't snip the um, the thread. But it's double. These top three are like doubled, which is not the case on the other side. And then this one is just hanging out. So, oh, right, Sonja, no quality control. And I'm not even going to put this. I'm not putting this 
on QVC. This is a Dooney issue. This is, I know QVC has had its own challenges with quality control, particularly around returns, um, whether it's missing accessories or dust bags being missing or the bags just <laughs> having been carried for 30 days before its return. But this kind of issue, this is, this is not a QVC issue. This is a Dooney quality production issue right here. So I'm curious, Suz, Anj, and for anyone, Teresa, um, you ladies shared at the beginning of my sip and cuss that you have been continuing to purchase Dooney, that you're about 50-50. So I'm curious, one, what are you buying? And two, are you buying it directly from ILD or Dooney or are you shopping the secondary market? I'm really curious, and I think everyone else in the room right now wants to know if you are buying Dooney from like like the pre-love market, buying backs that maybe you missed out on, wanted to add in your collection, um, or if there's something that you are buying right now from Dooney and ILD that we should have on our radar screen because... Every little step, as, as Bobby Brown would say, every little step I take right now towards Dooney, this is now two bags in less than 60 days time that there's an issue. All right, so Teresa's buying accessories. Andre's buying coral. Andre, did you pre-order the coral like Florentine medium satchel? All right, the Closet Dive is the outlet in Macy's. But are you finding anything, Closet Dive, different at Macy's than what you're finding on ILD and Dooney.com? <clears throat> okay, you got the wallet, okay. Teresa, I agree with you. I think they are slowly leaving the queue um, because last year, or maybe it was the beginning of this year when they did the, was that the beacon that they did as a TF? No, it wasn't beacon. They did the Solaria um, TSV twice. If you follow TSVs and especially Dooney close enough, did, was I the only one that realized that they did that TSV twice and like thought that it was, I, I, I don't know, maybe if you missed the price the first time, but am I the only one that realized that they had duplicated a TSV in like, I don't know that those were 90 days apart. So it's almost like maybe they've committed to what they're going to buy or the number of TSVs or whatever. And QVC is like, let me just let's just do whatever we can to like clear our arrangement up so that you can move on. But I don't know how it is. Maybe, maybe I just thought about this. Maybe the reason. As as Mrs. Q would say, follow me down the rabbit hole. Because Sue, I'm sure, is like begging every day to retire so she can spend time with her grandchildren and not fly in and out of the Philadelphia or the Lancaster Airport, particularly during the winter months, um, to be on air at QVC. And because the Ashley Bellman transition, in my opinion, on QVC has been a complete and utter flop, like epic fail. I wonder if part of that transition is to just move the brand out or maybe it's over slowly on HSN, but they know that with Ashley presenting it, there is a completely different um, volume uh, of orders from when Sue presents versus when Ashley presents. Because I tell you, I haven't bought a single thing that Ashley has presented. When I record um, or DVR uh, those 
sessions. If I notice that Sue is not presenting, I watch the entire thing and fast forward. And if there is something on there that I'm interested in, I may slow it down or watch just a snippet of it. But then I go over to YouTube and I search for the name of that bag and I look to see if there's a presentation that Sue has done because I just got get so much more um, out of it than when Ashley does. You know, I, I know um, for those of you that follow Ashley on social media, um, for those of you that um, kind of keep up with her, I know you have told me that she is a Dooney girl and that you've seen pictures of her, but I still call BS. I call flag on the play. I just do not see Ashley as a Dooney and Burt girl. I see her as an LV carrier. I could see her um carrying a Michael Kors. I could see her quite honestly carrying a Chanel. I could I can envision her carrying anything other than Dooney and Burke. I in my opinion Ashley is the type of person just based on the persona that I get on TV. I don't know her um, but she seems to me to be the kind of person that in the comfort of her own home or around her friends, she would call it the, the old lady bag company or something like that. Because I just don't know that given the length of time that she's had to learn the brand and to present that she has really bought into duty. So I, I imagine that there was a solid reason for why um, for why QVC and or Dooney thought that she would be a great replacement for Sue Clifton. But that was a huge, huge miss for me. And I've heard from many of you. I know that there's, there's some Ashley fans. I get it. Um, let, let's just do a poll. If you are... For Ashley Bellman presenting for QVC on Dooney, if you support it, type yay. If you are, if it's a no go for you, type nay. I just want to see the yays and nays on Ashley and her presenting on QVC for Dooney. If you can get with it, I want to see the yays. If not, where are the nays? Yeah, the nays have it. I, 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 I just, I don't know. I, I just don't think, I don't, I think Ashley enjoys her job. But I don't think that she, I could see her like presenting Vince Camuto. I just can't imagine her like in her real life carrying Dooney. I just, I just can't. She is absolutely no Sue Clifton. She is absolutely not. Um, and quite honestly, um, with um, Mary Beth, with that Sean Kellinger that could sell me anything, um, and a couple of other ladies, quite honestly, I don't know that they needed a replacement. If Sue went on to retire, I think the host um, that truly enjoy the brand, that are tied to the brand, that like the quality of it, I think that they are more than capable of carrying it. I'm not crazy. I'm sure Sean Killinger has every brand of bag, whether it's carried on QVC or not. But I also think that she is a supporter enough of the brand that she could sell that bag to me if there were no representative from Dooney um, in that presentation. I just, I, that's what I think. That's what I think. Um, so what I wanted to do with this 
is to see if a couple of accessories that I have would pair with it. So a little bit of a this or that. So I use this typically as a tech case. And right now I'm not using it as a tech case because if you recall from my Nashville haul from the um, meetup there, I actually um, bought a Vera Bradley double zip pencil case and I'm using one side for tech, one side as a pen case. So I was able to move out of this one. So, but I do think here it's too dark, but the fact that the D's and B's are a little bit lighter, I think I could absolutely continue to make that work. This is the extra piece that came with my Tote McKenzie Hobo, which is right there, like right there. That bag is always closed, always within my reach because um, it is an amazing bag. I would love for Dooney to bring that back. It doesn't have to be on QVC. If I found it on HSN, I just have to purchase it from HSN. But to bring it back to Dooney.com or to the outlets in this amazing leather, in some gorgeous pops of color, that would have been amazing for the summer to just bring that back and to add red because I think it was a huge miss. Geranium is geranium, but geranium is not red. That was a miss, in my opinion, when that bag was initially um, available. But it was a little extra that came with it. And this is a little browner, but it would absolutely pair with it. Thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. All right. The next is my Alice. Um, and this is in the color Oyster. So she's a wristlet, can be detached. You have seen this many a time on my channel. And I just want to compare the Safiano Oyster to the City Oyster in the Kingston Hobo to see if they would absolutely go there and because this is so neutral I can throw in some other pops of color accessories like my reds and have it all fit together so that this is Safiano and this is the city both in the color oyster can we get the um Alice in Florentine that would make for an amazing wallet that would be like the perfect travel wallet. You could put your passport in here. I just think that this should this should come back from the grave in Florentine, your basic Florentine colors. It would be amazing for travel. So if you are not accustomed to a wallet this large, to get it for out of the country on your cruises when you have like all of your travel documents and tickets and itineraries and all of that stuff, this would be perfect. But I would want it in Florentine. I would want it in Florentine leather so that it just stayed with my luggage and so that it would last for many, many years and be tied um, sentimentally to a ton of different trips. Um, but this one is in Safiano. I agree, the, uh, the closet dive. Willis absolutely needs to come back in Florentine. And then the last thing is this. And this was not a recent purchase. It has been camped out together, waiting for its turn in rotation. And it is the Safiano Large Carrington in Oyster. So Oyster in both of these, which I don't think you'd 
need both. But because Ams introduced the tribe um, into using the large Carrington as a catch-all in the bag, in a purse, because it only has a zipper pocket on the back. It doesn't have a divider. It doesn't have any cards. It really is just a catch-all. Um, so using that as a catch-all inside of a bag. So there's that. So I know everything is a little bit tonal, but my tribe sister Kimberly to revisit from yesterday's tribe time, that would absolutely work in this one as well as a small wallet or card case. The colors actually pull and pair very nicely. I really like that. And um, I'm surrounded by options, but none of which I think Let's see, let's see. I think that is it. What is this? Oh, that's a different day. All righty. Thank you, ladies. All right, so that is all that I have. Um couple of changes for next week's lineup so that you don't miss anything. Mrs. Q is taking Friday night off. So she will not be hosting for real Friday. But Kimberly Mimes will be filling in. So on Friday night at 7 at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central, Mrs. Q is going to be off, so we will be over hanging on Kimberly Mines channel during the For Real Friday time. Then on Saturday, we are going to um, share, um, all of us are planning to share something. Um, I'm going to host at the 11 Eastern time slot. And for those of you that saw yesterday's reflection video, um, the tribe birthday, you saw that the meet up slash birthday party for the tribe is actually going to be in Charlotte. So the registration for that is open on Eventbrite. So there will be a few of us um, or a couple or how many ever of us together um, celebrating the tribe's birthday. Um, but before and or after that throughout the day on Saturday, all of the ladies in the tribe are going to post videos and just flood your timeline with live streams and with video uploads. We are going to coordinate our times so that you do not have to pick and choose between um, simultaneous live streams. Um, we'll work that out so that as one ends, the other one can start so that you're able to bounce from one channel to the next. Um, and then on Sunday, um, we are probably going to be a little bit on location because I think at that point I will be in South Carolina. So um, we will figure out what Sunday evening is going to look like or um, let you know it, it may be a little bit earlier on Sunday just because of the holiday weekend and I'm gonna go and hang out with my family and my friends and do some stuff and in hot South Carolina 
Um, but we just don't want you to think that just because Mrs. Q is off on Friday night that there won't be any content. That is not the case. Kimberly Mines is going to pick up the baton on Friday night and fill in for For Real Friday. Um, tribe time on Saturday, live on location in Charlotte from Eddie's Place. So that's where we are going to be celebrating the tribe's birthday. So if you are in the area passing through Charlotte within a close drive from South Carolina or other parts of North Carolina or Tennessee or wherever, come on over, hang out with us in Charlotte. Um, and then uh, the ladies in the tribe are going to be posting content, live streaming throughout the day on Saturday. So you are going to get your feel of the tribe for our birthday weekend um, and for the first official holiday to kick off the summer. Because last year, that uh, the Memorial Day weekend, we were all together just meeting each other for the first time. So it is going to be crazy, not to mention all of the sales that we hope to be able to take advantage of. So stay tuned. Make sure that you are subscribed to all of the ladies whose names you have seen tonight in the live chat. Make sure that you hit subscribe and turn on the bell so that whenever they go live, whenever we post a video, you will be in the know. And other than that, I hope you have an amazing week, an amazing week. Um, and I don't know, go inspect the most recent Dooney purchase you got because clearly there's something going on with quality. I, 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 I love it. But right now, Peter and I are struggling in marriage counseling. We, we just... We're struggling right now in marriage counseling. And I, I don't know. So please make sure that you hit the thumbs up before you head out. There are 56 of you hanging out in the room, but only 14 thumbs up. You stuck around. You listened to my rant. You watched my bag. The least you can do is thumbs up on your way out. I mean, otherwise, why spend your time hanging out if you won't even... I, it, the thumbs. Anyway, thank you so very much for watching, everyone. Until next time, I do hope that you find something that feeds your Dooney addiction. Take care.